first off, congratulations on the film. Thank you very much. Why don't you start by giving us a little bit of, uh, you know, a background on your character and a, a little bit about the, the plot of the film, and we'll take it from there. Yeah, I play a small town pastor, a small town community, beloved by his community. I remember reading right off the bat one of the things that the writers had put in this the, in the instruction was uh, he's a rock star in this community. So he's just a, you know, a really connected man of the people. Um, and it's this sort of Spielbergian small town. And what happens is... Um, basically disaster uh he is he is uh met with a a, a a terrible um uh tragedy um that happens and it's how do you deal with it you know it's a revenge tale i think it what it does is it it's uh, the foundation of the film is built on this provocative question of what would you what would you do if you had a minute alone with someone who did you harm you know and uh, uh bad harm and um I think, you know, it's a revenge tale at the end of the day, uh, one of the oldest stories in the book, but I think it's told in a different way. So it's like slow burn, character driven, and then it gets really crazy. And I feel like it's always sort of like what's around this, the, the next corner. It's like a really crazy journey. And I think that's because this man of the cloth who has very high morals is faced with the situation. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you... Um relate to this character? I mean, is this, did you feel like you would have made some of the same decisions if you were in, in his position? I think I certainly would feel like I would want to make the decisions. And I think like, I think the interesting thing about this in terms of relating to this character is I can understand the religious background. Like I was an altar boy when I was young and I get the religious aspects very much. Um, but, you know, you have to layer, I layered this guy too. Like, was he a guy who maybe didn't come from the best place, but then looked to God and found some answers. So he's choosing to be passive, you know, in, in situations, but he has something under underlying, like we all do as human beings. But I think so, you know, at the end of the day, you find out who he is as a human being. And I think we can all relate to other human beings, hopefully, if we take the time and understand their situation and their background and their story. So I think at the end of the day, that's what he is. But I think what's really interesting is doing research. I think if you have a child or a niece or a nephew, you can understand wanting this. And, and you think about something happening to them. If someone ever hurt my family, you know, what would you do to them? So I think we can all relate to that feeling, that sort of primal instinct. But I think what's really interesting at the end of the day on this is you might want that and desire it and you'll certainly would feel that way you know you want them to hurt back right because they hurt you or they hurt them but could you really do it you know when face to face could you really hurt a human being and i think that's really interesting to think about yeah for sure um talk about the the shooting of the film i mean are there was there a scene for you that was your favorite to shoot and why uh, well, listen, you know, this was, it's, it's so hard to make a movie, you know, this has been going on for years now and, and, and especially through COVID, you know, it's like, I read the script. I loved it. I'm like, I really want to make this, got the backing, got the resources, you know, have never looked back. It's like the kind of thing you have to, so you just have to run through walls. It's all about the work. Right. And it's really, I can't even believe that what I sort of went through and some of the circumstances you know, having to pivot. I, that's just like, oh, if you don't get a location, right? You have to pivot and figure it out. But with this one, let alone egos, it's a big crew and they were so incredible. And then shooting through COVID, you know, shutdowns and then having to come back. So a lot of time was spent putting out fires. Luckily, I understood the story very well. So I was very well prepped and I did all the work for the character um, and sort of put all those layers in there and just sort of found all the pinches. So then the ouches were there in the scenes. But I'll tell you that. Uh, and then also being exhausted most of the time helped in this particular case with this guy. But I think um, my favorite scene, I liked riding that motorcycle, actually. One other person asked me this and I was like, you know what? I felt like pretty cool on that motorcycle. <laughs> I like the motorcycle. I don't get to ride it long, but just even ripping around set and doing different takes. And I like the way it looks for the short time that I am on it. So that was fun. 
Um, the fighting scenes are always cool. You know, like fake blood is sort of annoying. Like I don't even like makeup. So when the blood's on you, it's very sticky and very, it's like syrupy and your shirt is sticking like this in between takes. So those are long and it's cold. It was cold. We were shooting nights. My character's in a t-shirt, but I love the fighting. I like the physical stuff too. But, and I, and the last thing I'll add to you, and by the way, it's not like I'm digging ditches. So I always, when I say that, I can't help but say, look, I'm making a movie, you know, but, um, so it's all fun. And I like working with Mark Menchaca a lot, man. When I think back, our acting scenes and just playing with him was really fun. He plays the other lead character in the film. And I don't know if you know Mark, he's from, he was in Ozark and uh, The Outsider, Stephen King's The Outsider. And he's such a great actor and a great dude. Mm -hmm. And for, for any of those fight scenes, do you um, ever worry about getting hurt when you're doing them? I think I would, I don't know, man, maybe I've gotten older. I guess it's been three years. I, I didn't necessarily film those scenes exactly three years ago. Some of them were like six months ago or a year ago, but I think you do for this. I had to stretch. I had to make sure I was, I was trying to eat healthy. I was trying to, I was able to pull, I was on a television show for a long time called Rescue Me. It was about New York City firefighters post 9-11 and the stunt coordinator, one of the stunt guys there, Norman Douglas, I brought over to this film. So I knew him well and I trusted him and he's amazing. And uh, you would 100% at the end of the day of these, I'd have bumps, bruises, scrapes, be sore, but what I was worried about was not being able to shoot another day, like being injured or having a limp or something, you know, even, even waking up with a stiff neck, sometimes you're like, so I wanted to make sure that I was, I, it, it was all about, uh, it's all about what we get on the screen. So I was constantly, that was on my mind to stay healthy so we can film the next day and try to do whatever I could under these circumstances. And I'm not the most disciplined and best at it, especially when you're working long hours and you pack past craft services and you, you know, you get into those snacks and stuff, but uh, did my best um, to try to stay healthy and all, for all regards too. even vitamin C stuff. You do all that, you know? Mm -hmm.